All right, shalom everyone. Welcome to the Tuesday Night Torah Study, sponsored by MTOI. Really glad to be back. I know I have a minute for a couple of weeks. I know David did a really good job hosting, um, and we'll have him back up there hosting again. And uh, how about them, Cowboys? Thank you, Steve. That last quarter was a little crazy. Um, anyway, so we're here for the Torah Study. I am back. Um, hopefully I will not cough too much. My coughing is much worse in the evenings. And so um, I'm hoping it will be better. Let's see if I can start off with a, a wave. We can do a little quick wave here. See if that could possibly work out. There we go. Shalom, everyone. Give everybody a little scratch. Hope everybody's doing well. Good to see everybody. For all of those thinking that, oh, yes, yeah, the people guessing what shirt. I am not even wearing the M2I shirt today. Sorry about that. I forgot that we were playing the game. Let me turn that off. We don't need that anymore. Okay. But all of you that did try to guess and had a shirt on, you get you get uh, you get consolation points. We'll add them to your scores for the uh, the season total. Okay. So um, we will we'll begin as always for anybody here who's new. We always start off with um, <laughs> David has the score in a tally uh, in a spreadsheet. Very good. So if you don't like your score, you can complain to David at the end of the season. I will, you know, neither confirm nor deny, confirm or deny that, you know, I have anything to do with it. Okay. Um, we are going to go through the study tonight, um, but we're going to start off first with prayer time, as we always do. So if you have a prayer need or a praise report, you can go ahead and type it in or raise your hand, and we'll go ahead and address the prayer needs and praise reports. I'll begin with um, an update on Rabbi Tom. Okay, I spoke to him, oh, about an hour ago, and uh, I went and saw him yesterday. Uh, he had a fairly major surgery on Monday morning, yesterday morning early. Uh, he came through it with uh, flying colors, is doing fabulously, uh, but he's still not you know, out of the woods completely as far as his recovery, so please continue to keep him in prayer. Um, big praise. At this point, he's no longer on the oxygen tank. His oxygen numbers have come up uh, well enough. The operation had to do with his lungs, and um, and he seems to be breathing much better. And so they have taken him off the oxygen, which is a, a huge praise. And so he's doing much better with that. But, you know, he did have a major surgery just yesterday, so he's going to need some time to recover. We do expect him to be returning maybe on Thursday. Okay? And so uh, big praise to you uh, that... Um, our Rabbi Tom seems to be doing very well, and hopefully this will improve his quality of life going forward here as he's able to breathe and have his lungs work a little bit better. Okay, so please continue to keep him in prayer. Okay, what else we got coming on the screen here? Let's see. Someone's praising out that I'm back and that the Internet is working, etc. Okay, that's Dave and Amy. Um, Jack and... Uh, uh, Jess Ann, please pray for favor and adoption of our grandson, okay? Yanni, so good to see you here. I, I just haven't been in Bible study for a while. Good to have you. Praise Abba for always keeping an eye on us and always hearing our prayers. Bless Abba. Arthur, praise Linda's mother's estate, estate house sold. The new owners took possession yesterday. Awesome. Okay, let's see. Uh, Steve and Gwen, prayer for Evan and Evelyn. They will be traveling to to Illinois for the winter school break, asking for safe travels for them. And we look forward to seeing them. I believe you're planning to bring them here at some point, at least for a quick visit. So we are all looking forward to that to that visit. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Uh, Sarah Beth, Pastor Test. Amen. Awesome. Laura, unspoken prayer. The Red Family, prayer for our house situation, prayers for health of our family, and that the Father would allow us to be well enough for Shabbat. Lorraine Hasbrook, unspoken. 
Rachel J, so many unspoken. Also prayers for all my sisters. Carrie Gephardt unspoken. We have a lot of unspokens tonight. Um, Shamus Robert Losey, tonight is the birthday of my wife's eldest sister who died of cancer recently. They've been awaiting the results of a test for cancer for another sister, and they got the message that she's cancer free. Ah, praise Abba. Awesome. Robert, tell Nayla we are so excited for that. Okay. Kelly West, prayer request for several unspokens. Stephen Gwen said, yes, they'll be here on the 28th. That's awesome. Or 29th, okay. Uh, Rena, prayer request for health concerns and unspoken. John, Robin, and Tia, praise that our daughter Tia is here with us today for study, for the uh, Torah study. Awesome. Cheryl, unspoken. Cheryl seems to have a question mark in your name. Are you not sure you're Cheryl or you are sure you're Cheryl? <laughs> Maybe you're not sure you're from Oregon. Okay. Um, Rick Berry, several unspoken. Tammy, unspoken prayers. Um, let's see. Aaron Murray in the hospital a week now, praying to go home soon. Also a friend, Brandy, needs prayer. She's in lots of pain. And doctors aren't helping. Okay, we certainly can pray for that. Claudia, praise Abba for hearing our prayers. Please pray for my father's skin issues to clear up my health and a few unspoken. Aaron Sullivan, I found out this week that our move to Tennessee will not be contested in court. Awesome. Praise Abba. Ian Taylor in Hawaii, unspoken for my mother. Uh, Candace wants us to pray for South Africa and their situation there, which is certainly not getting any better at the moment. Santi Lee talks to Chinese parents will were well received. Pray for family reconciliation due to different values. Children's spiritual needs, Isabel's job search. My website, prep and advertisement. Awesome. Okay, we'll keep that all in prayer. <clears throat> Carrie Gephardt, Nick and I will be down there on the 28th. Okay, we're going to have a lot of people on the 28th. Awesome. Um, George and Isabel, prayer for the right buyer for our home this month. You know, certainly we can put that on there. Terry Zimmerman, too long to explain every detail, but please pray for our precious Sammy, Worcester, Dolly, and that we can withstand the ugliness of the system and see her adopted to our family. Okay, certainly we can pray for that. Uh, okay, let's see. Ollie. Shalom, everyone. Okay, he was a little bit late. You're welcome to the study. Even though you are late, you only missed a little bit of prayer time. Jim and Lynn, prayers for brother-in-law in hospital, not doing very well after surgery for tumor and bowels. <clears throat> Excuse me, prayer uh, for Rich and Lena. Praise Yah for my mother's eye surgery going well. That's from Rich. Uh, Jonathan Thompson, praise Yah for Rabbi Thompson's successful surgery. Prayers for speedy recovery. Thank you for that. Um, when I saw him yesterday after the surgery, I have to tell you, considering he had major surgery, he looked absolutely fabulous. Abba is just really blessing him uh, in that. Please keep, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, please keep his wife, Reverend and Joanne, in prayer as well. You know, this has been quite exhausting. She's doing fabulous, but of course, you know, watching, you know, your husband go through major surgery is exhausting, as you can imagine. Okay. Uh, Tethany, prayer, Baylor is accepted in Tennessee K-12 school and for Chris having difficulties at work. Tom and Carmen, prayers for work-related struggles. My wife, Carmen, and blessings for good neighbors who have helped us with some problems. Okay, we can certainly do that. Okay, big praise from David. After a long process... Samia's mom, Maria Elena Romero, will officially receive her retirement payment starting January 2nd. It's everything we were expecting and more, just like everything else Abba provides Dayenu. Dayenu is the Hebrew for it would have been sufficient. In other words, you know, this is, you know, a pleasure and a praise, and they don't need anything more to be happy. We've been talking about that quite a bit, actually, haven't we, in the um, Are You Covenanted series of late, the idea of seeing his blessing and miracles in your life and being able to say Dayenu. All right. <clears throat> She's been working since she was 15. Awesome. All right. Any other prayer requests or praise reports? I'm trying to grab Robert back up to the top here. There we go. 
Sorry, Robert, for not grabbing you sooner. I was busy reading all of the things listed here. Okay. Mark, big praise. Yesterday during early hours, electric was knocked down the storm. Uh, heat, um, with elect I heat with electric and water is electric. Didn't get it back to last night, but was grateful. There you go. Yanni wants us to pray for the Jews in Denmark. They can't go free on the street. Wow. I did not know that. Okay, that is not good stuff. Okay, uh, Raymond's got something long he's typing. So we'll wait for that for a second. I watched a Torah study recording of you guys from a previous year, and Shamus Robert was using the name Steve Berkson. <laughs> it was really confusing. There you go. Yeah, there, there are times where I've had Robert have to log in as me um, when we didn't have the software working exactly <laughs> the way we needed it to. So that has happened in the past. All right. It was still waiting for a few more to be typed in. Yep, nearly 100. We have been doing well over 100 every week in the 115, 120 range. Also, for those of you that are keeping track, we are um, up to 14,611 or so subscribers on YouTube. So we're getting close to the big 15,000 range. So that's a big praise. It's awesome. Pretty exciting to get there. Yeah, 2000. Is that what it was at Sukkot? I don't remember what it was at Sukkot. Okay, let's see. Uh, Raven, praying for a bit more stability with Ezra's sleep situation as Annalisa's existing issues leave her not well, able to weather many sleepless nights. On a related note, I will have to be in and out tonight as I take care of various things. Thanks for understanding and praise Abba. Or strengthening us through trials. Yes, absolutely. And, um, and Raymond, if you can remember to get in touch with me uh, at your convenience this week, uh, we will we will be able to arrange that other meeting that we were talking about. Um, I've spoken to the other parties involved. Okay, um, we do not have to do that tonight. Okay, let's see. Okay, Diane in Portland praises for a wonderful trip with my grandson who travels to see me for a few days. He has eight weeks. Prayers that he may not get ill from travel in the airport. Uh, Kevin Shutt praise report that my visit to the oral surgeon went much better than expected, possibly no surgery. Awesome. Crystal wants to know how Rabbi Tom is doing. Crystal, I already gave that report, but I'm glad to give it again. He's doing fabulous. Um, I'll, 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 I'll cover it again during the break in between. How's that? Uh, but he's doing very well. You should be back possibly on Thursday. Uh, let's see, Yanni Muslims are hunting Jews all over. Government take Muslim on an island as prison. Government take Muslims on an island as prison. <clears throat> okay, I have to look more of that up in look up in Denmark news reports on on the web here and see what I can find out. I was not familiar with these things. Okay. Um, Ali, praise for dealing with bureaucracy is helping me display the fruits of the spirit, patience, and maintaining shalom is very key. Okay, Alan Jeannie, praise Yah that no one was coming when we lost our brakes this morning at a highway intersection. They were fixed this afternoon. We were grateful. Okay. David, just checked our YouTube channel. 7,000 plus subscribers gained in 2018 alone. All right, so half of the subscribers, we have 14,000, have been gained this year. That's pretty good. Praise Yah. All right, Robin and Aletha. Praise report. Abba has allowed someone to pay all of our bills for this month. A real financial relief for us. Fantastic. Robin and Nancy. A job interview tomorrow. We'll keep that in prayer. All right, let's see. Anybody else before we start? Looks like a few people came a little bit late, so we'll. 
let them type in some of their deals real quickly here. Okay, Olivia and Janet, prayer for my holiday concert tomorrow, Valentina. Okay, I really don't know how to respond to that because holiday concerts tend to be Christmas related and we should probably not be participating in those. And so since you put it out here in public, I have to sort of address it in public. Sorry about that. So having not spoken to me about that, I don't really know much about this holiday concert. My daughter has missed uh, choirs and other things in school because the holiday concerts tend to have Christmas songs in them and we would rather our children didn't participate in that. Okay. Anybody else? Hey, Rob and Tamara. Huge praise that Tamara's family changed their wedding from Friday evening to 11 a.m. so we could have time to get ready for Shabbat. Awesome. That's fantastic. Okay, looks like I've got a few more still typing in and then we'll get started. Going once, going twice. Okay, pray for meeting with local elders. Uh, that's from Santi. Prayer for my girlfriend to find the true faith path so we don't disagree anymore from from, uh, not even sure how to pronounce your name, in uh, Hallandale, Florida. I don't want to mispronounce it. Okay, uh, okay, Olivia and John, you can call after the study if you'd like. Okay, Lewis. Okay, Lewis I can work with. Thank you, Lewis. I don't want to embarrass myself mispronouncing names. I mean, that's a little rough. So thank you for taking me out of that predicament. All right, David, prayer for our leadership at MTI and for more men to step up, echoing Robert's pointed comments from last week. Okay, and by the way, Lewis, all right, um, again, <laughs> okay, I should put a warning out in the future that when we're doing prayer time or anything like this in public, anything you type in could cause a possible public response to something that you might not have wanted to be responded in public. Okay, so Lewis, it says, prayer for your girlfriend to find the true faith. Okay, I would ask you to consider that if she doesn't, or what you're going to do if she doesn't in terms of moving on to a relationship that ends in marriage, okay? I promise you the worst possible thing you could do is get married unequally yoked. It will only lead to an awful marriage. And so since you put it out there in public, I have to address it. And, um, you know, please be aware of that. If you are dating somebody and they are not on the same page as you, probably not going to work. All right? If you are already covenanted, please do not start dating someone who's not covenanted. Because once your emotions get connected, you will find it very hard to disengage those emotions. Then you will find yourself in a trap. Remember, we do not let the emotions drive the bus. Okay, I want ones and twos for this. Do we all understand that we are not to let our emotions drive the bus? This is a bad idea. Okay, thank you. Emotions driving the bus is a guaranteed disaster. And so if you become emotionally attached to a person of the opposite sex, and they are not in covenant, and you are, and then because of your emotional attachment, you decide to pursue a relationship further, as into marriage, this is, I'm telling you, disaster written all over it. Please heed my words. I counsel a lot of people. Look, it's not, I'm not saying that if you're already married and you came into covenant, the other person didn't. That's a challenge. You should probably get counsel on how to maximize your success there. But if you can avoid that problem by not becoming unequally yoked in the first place, <coughs> okay, trust me when I tell you 
it is better to avoid that than to have to deal with it and hopefully get it to work out. So just I'm not telling you to break up with your girlfriend. I'm just telling you, please be careful with this and, and consider counseling with me about it so that you can hopefully avoid what could be a very difficult challenge for you. Okay? All right, let's see. Okay, I think that's going to cover it. So um, let's get one of the guys to raise their hand. Oh, actually, let me add a few things real quickly. Hold on. You can still raise your hand, so let me just add a couple of things real quickly. Um, one or more of the men who were in danger of this and have been liberated from it. Hallelujah. That's good. Okay. Um, please keep Brianna in prayer. She's somewhat under the weather. She's dealing with what sounds a little bit like a head cold. Uh, so please keep her in prayer. Um, what else? My cough situation. I think may be related to another problem. I'm going. I'm going to probably be going for a sleep study. Apparently, I have. Uh, I possibly have a sleep apnea problem, which is maybe what caused the enlarging of the heart that we talked about a couple months ago, and could also be triggering the coughing. Okay, because I've had a cough for a long time. I had it back in the spring. I had it other times. The coughing could be related to these other problems. So I'm going to be trying to go do a sleep study maybe sometime here in the next week or two. And, and get that resolved, so please keep that in prayer. Okay, as far as my recovery from my fall on, the, on, the, on my vacation, um, everything seems fully back to normal and my eye seems to be much better. Now the sleep apnea certainly could, well I did do a sleep study a while back and they said I didn't have any apnea but I had some hypopnea. Hypopnea is like an almost apnea. The breathing slows down to you know quite quite a lot, but it doesn't actually stop. And so, um, and now I think it maybe has gotten worse. And so it's time for me to go have it checked out. And so we'll do that. Okay. So. Oh, only four men raised their hand. That is uh Kind of disappointing, actually. Okay, so um, let's go ahead. And Father in heaven, we just come before you today. Just want to acknowledge you, Father, as our creator and maker and provider. Just want to thank you, Father, for everything that you give us. Thank you that we could get together here and study your word and study your Torah, Father. Help us to become better citizens, Father, of your kingdom. We also <clears throat> want to raise up all the praises and the prayers that the requests, prayer requests, Father. You know all of our needs, Father, and we just want to thank you for answering those and to, we accept your answer, Father, and your answer is always right, Father. And we just look to you for all these things and look to you for a successful study tonight. We just bless you and thank you in your son's name, Yeshua. Amen. Amen, amen. Okay, thank you. Um, <coughs> now, um, we do have some announcements. Let me just make them real quickly, and then we'll get started. Um, the first important announcement is, of course, it is now Rosh Kodesh for, for Tibet. So in the new month of Tibet, uh, it's not Rosh Kodesh anymore, but we are in the new month. Today is Rosh Kodesh. I mean, today is Tibet 3, going into 4. So, uh, so welcome into your new month. Okay. And also, on this Shabbat, we will have um, friends of ours, Mishkanim, which is a, a musical uh, group. Uh, let's see if I can. Mishkanim, okay, which is Howie and Alain George. And they are um, going to be uh, leading praise and worship at... Uh, at our congregation on this Shabbat. If anybody's going to be in town for it, you're going to have an opportunity to see see them there. Okay, they have a few albums. You can uh, listen to some of their stuff online, as well as um, they are telling me that they are in the process of recording a new album with new songs, and we should be getting to hear some of their new songs uh, this week as well as part of uh, their, their sharing with us in praise. You know, I have to keep resisting the idea of calling it a performance or a show, because it's not. They're, they're wanting to be with us and lead us in praising our king. And so they will be here on this Shabbat 
the 15th. I just kind of wanted to throw that out there so everybody else. Also, Hanukkah is over. All right, so I hope everybody enjoyed their time it's focused on rededicating themselves. Okay, so I hope that went well for everyone. All right, so where we are tonight, can't hear. Can somebody let uh, William and Chantel know their sound? Okay, so tonight we're doing Parsha Vayigash, which is Genesis 44, 18 to 47, 27. Okay, Vayigash. Okay. Okay, um, oh, we can't hear Ms. Kanim. <laughs> okay, okay, the person was saying, oh, no, we're not going to be able to get to hear them. Well, you'll get to hear them during services, okay, because we're going to have them playing during services, and we'll, if we do something after services, we'll broadcast that as well. So keep an eye out on the live stream for after services. There are people waiting to come in the room. Just want to remind my Shah machine. Okay, um, there, we, we should be uh, streaming whatever it is they end up doing. So don't worry about that. Uh, if they end up doing something after services, we'll stream that as well. Okay? So that should work out, hopefully, for everyone. Okay, so Parsha Vayigash. I have room for seven readers. Okay, each of the readings is fairly long, 15 to 16 verses or so. Okay, so I have room for seven. Is, what does Vayigash mean? And he came here. Ah, okay, I'm after your mic was on. I got to hear Linda say that. Good job, Linda. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, and came near and he approached, etc. Good, good job. Okay. All right, so the way this works is I'm going to call an individual up to read. I'm going to read a traditional blessing over them, and um, and then I'll tell you what verses you're going to read going forward. And we're going to begin with uh, Steve Waffle. He who blessed our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may he bless Steve, who's come up to honor Yahweh in the Torah. May the set apart one bless him and his family, and send blessing and prosperity on all the works of his hands. Amen. Okay, Steve, go ahead and start in Genesis 44, verse 18, and take us to the end of the chapter. Okay, here we go. Turn that down a little bit. There, 18. And Yehuda came near to him and said, O master, please let your servant speak a word in my master's hearing, and do not let your displeasure burn against your servant, for you are like Pharaoh. My master asked his servant, saying, Have you a father or a brother? And we said to my master, We have a father, an old man, and a younger, excuse me, and a young child of his old age, and his brother is dead, and he alone is left of his, fa of his mother's children, and his father loves him. And you said to your servants, Bring him down to me, and let me set my eyes on him. And we said to my master, The boy is not able to leave his father, for if he leaves his father, his father shall die. But if you say to your servants, Unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you do not need to see my face again. And it came to be when we went up to your servant, my father, that we told him the words of my master. And, my, and our father said, Go back and buy us little food. But we said, We are not able to go down if our youngest brother is with us. Then we shall go down, for we are not able to see the man's face unless our younger brother is with us. Then your servant, my father, said to us, You know that my wife bore me two sons, and that one went out from me, and I said, Truly he is torn and torn to pieces, 
and I have not seen him since. And if you take this one from me too, and harm comes to him, you shall bring down my gray hair to evil, with evil to show. And now, if I come to your servant, my mat, my father, and the boy is not with us, since he owns, excuse me, since his own life is bound up in his life, then it shall be, when he sees us that the boy is not with us, that he shall die. So your servant shall bring down the gray hair to your servant, our father, with evil to show. Then the servant went, guarantee for the boy to my father, saying, I do not bring him back to you. Oh, excuse me. If I do not bring him back to you, then I shall be a sinner before my father forever. And now, please let your servant remain instead of the boy, and I slave to my master, and let the boy go up with his brothers. Now, excuse me, for now do go up to my father if the boy is not with me, lest I see the evil that would come upon my father. Amen, amen. Okay, thank you, Steve. And just a reminder to everyone, when you're finished reading, you go ahead and put your hand down. Steve already did that, but just a reminder for everybody. All right, thank you. Next up is Arthur. He who blessed our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. May he bless Arthur, who's come up out of Yahweh in the Torah. May the set apart one bless him and his family and send blessing and prosperity upon all the works of his hand. Amen. Okay, Arthur, take us into chapter 45. And read verses 1 through 15. Okay, chapter 45. And Joseph was unable to restrain himself before all those who stood by him. And he called out, Have everyone go out from here. So no one stood with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud, and the Mitzvites in the house of Pharaoh heard it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers were unable to answer him, for they trembled before him. And Joseph said to his brothers, Please come near to me. And when they came near, he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold to, into Mitzrayim. And now do not be grieved nor displeased with yourselves, because you sold me here. For Elohim sent me before you to pre preserve life. For two years now the scarcity of food has been in the land, and there sh are still five years in which there is neither plowing nor harvesting. And Elohim sent me before you to preserve you for a remnant on the earth, and to give life to you by a great escape. So then, you did not send me here, but Elohim, and he has sent me for a father to Pharaoh, and the master of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Mitzrayim. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Yosef, Elohim has made me master of all Mitzrayim. Come down to me, do not delay. And you shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and be near to me you and your children, your children's children, your flocks and your herds, and all that you have. And I shall provide for you there, lest you and your household and all that you have come to poverty, because five years of scarcity of food are still to come. And look, your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, see that it is my mouth that speaks to you. And you shall inform my father of all my esteem and misleading, of all that you have seen, and you shall hurry and bring my father back down here. And he fell on his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept on his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept over them, and after that his brothers spoke with him. 
Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you, Arthur. All right, next up we have Tommy. You blessed our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. May he bless Tommy, who's called down to Yahweh in the Torah. Let us set apart one, bless him and his family, and send blessing and prosperity in all the works of his hands. Amen. Okay, Tommy's now going to continue in chapter 45, leading verses 16 to 28, which is the end of the chapter. Mike, Mike check. <clears throat> okay. 4516. And the report of it was heard by the house of Pharaoh, saying, The brothers of Yosef have come. And it was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants. And Pharaoh said to Yosef, Say to your brothers, Do this. Load your beasts and go. Enter the land of Canaan. And take your father and your households and come to me. And I give you the best of the land on its reign. And you eat the fat of the land. And you, you have been commanded, do this. Take wagons out of the land of Mitzrayim for your little ones and your wives, and you shall bring your father and come. And do not be concerned about your goods, for the best of all the land of Mitzrayim is yours. And the sons of Israel did so. And Yosef gave them wagons according to the command of Pharaoh, and he gave them food for the journey. He gave to all of them, to each man, changes of garments. But to Benjamin, he gave 300 pieces of silver and five changes of garments. And he sent to his father this, 10 donkeys loaded with the best of Mitzrayim, and 10 female donkeys loaded with grain and bread and food for his father for the journey. So he sent his brothers away, and they left. And he said to them, Do not quarrel along the way. And they went up out of Mitzrayim and came to the land of Canaan to Jacob, their father. And they told him, saying, Yosef is still alive, and he is governor over all the, all the land of Mitzrayim. And Jacob's heart ceased, for he did not believe them. But when they spoke to him all the words which Yosef had spoken to them, and when he saw the wagons which Yosef had sent to transport him, the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. And Yisrael said, Enough, my son Yosef is still alive. Let me go and see him before I die. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you. All right, next up we have AJ. He who blessed our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. May he bless AJ, who's come up to the Yahweh and the Torah. And instead of part one, bless him and his family, and send blessing and prosperity in all the works of his hands. Amen. Okay, AJ, go ahead and take us. From ch into chapter 46 now, we'll read verses 1 through 18. All right. Mic check. Good. And Yisrael sent out with all that he had, and he came to Beersheba and slaughtered slaughterings to the Elohim of his father, Yishak. And Elohim spoke to Yisrael in the visions of the night and said, Yaakov, Yaakov. And he said, Here I am. And he said, I am the El. Elohim of your father, do not be afraid to go down to Mitzrayim, for I shall make you there into a great nation. I myself am going with you to Mitzrayim, and I myself shall certainly bring you up again. And let Yosef put his hand on your eyes. And Yaakov rose from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel brought their father Yaakov and their little ones and their wives in the wagons which Pharaoh had sent to transport him. And they took their livestock and their property, which they had acquired in the land of Canaan, and came into Mithraim, Yaakov and all his seed with him, his sons and his sons' sons, his daughters and his sons' daughters, and all his seed he brought with him to Mithraim. And these were the names of the children of Israel, Yaakov and his sons who came into Mithraim. Reuben was Yaakov's first son, and the sons of Reuben, Hanak, and Palu, Hetron, and Karmi, and the, and the sons of Shimon, Yemuel, and Yamin, and Ohad, and Yachin, and Tosar, and Shaul, son of the Canaanite woman, and the sons of Levi, Gershon, Quaheth, Merari, and the sons of Yehuda, Er, and Onan, and Shila, and Peretz, and Zerah, but Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan, and the sons of Pretz were Hetron and Hamul, and the sons of Yisachar, Tola and Pawa and Yob and 
Shimron and the sons of Zebulun, Sarid and Elon and Yahel. These were the sons of Leah, whom she bore to Yaakov and Padan Aram with his daughter Dina. All the beings, his sons and his daughters, were 33. And the sons of Gad, Ziophon and Hagi and Shuni and Etzbon, Eri and Orodi and Eli, and the sons of Asher, Yimna and Yeshua and Yeshui and Bura and Seri, Sera, their sister, and the sons of Bera, Heber and Mekel. These were the sons of Zip, Zippa, whom Laban gave to Leah his daughter, and these she bore to Yaakov, sixteen beings. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you. Okay, next up is Chuck. You blessed our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. May he bless Chuck, who's come down to Yahweh and the Torah. May the set apart one bless him and his family and send blessing and prosperity in all the works of his hands. Amen. All right, Chuck's going to continue us here in chapter 46 and take us from verse 19 to the end of the chapter. Mike Chuck. The sons of Rahel, Yaakov's wife, Yosef and Benjamin, and to Yosef in the land of Mitzrayim were born Menashe, Menashe and Ephraim from Asana, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, born to him, and the sons of Benjamin, Bila, Becker, and Ashbel, Kera, and Naman, Eha, and Rosh, Mupum, Mupim, and Hupim, and Ar. These were the sons of Rachel, who were born to Yahoo, <clears throat> fourteen beings in all, and the sons of Dan, Hushim, and the sons of Naphtali. Yet, Yetzel and Guni and Yetzer and Shilahim. These were the sons of Bilal, who Laban gave to Rachel, his daughter. And she bore these to Jacob, seven beings in all. All the beings who went with Jacob to Mizraim, who came from his body, besides Jacob's sons, wives were 66 beings in all and the sons of Yosef who were born to him in Mitzrayim were two beings all the beings of the house of Jacob who went to Mitzrayim were 70 and he sent Yehuda before him to Yosef to point out before him the way to Goshen and they came to the land of Goshen and Yosef made ready his chariot and went up to Goshen to meet his father, Yisrael. And he appeared to him and fell on his neck and wept on his neck a long time. And Yisrael said to Yosef, Now let me die, since I have seen your face, that you are still alive. And Yosef said to his brothers and to his father's household, I am going up to inform Pharaoh and say to him, My brothers and those of my father's house who were in the land of Canaan have come to me, and the men are shepherds, that they have been men of livestock, and that they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. And it shall be when Pharaoh calls you and says, What is your occupation? That you shall say, Your servants have been men of livestock from our youth, even till now, both we and also our fathers, so that you dwell in the land of Goshen, for every shepherd is an abomination to the Misraites. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you, Chuck. Okay, so next up, we've got uh, Rick. 
You blessed our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. May he bless Rick, who's called Tana Yahweh in the Torah. It is set apart one, bless him and his family, and send blessing and prosperity on all the works of his hands. Amen. Okay, Rick, go ahead and take us into chapter 47. Read verses 1 through 13. Mic check. Then Yosef went and spoke to Pharaoh and said, My father and my brothers, their flocks and their herds and all that they possess have come from the land of Canaan. And see, they are in the land of Goshen. And he took five men from among his brothers and presented them to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to his brothers, What is your occupation? And they said to Pharaoh, Your servants are shepherds, both we and also our fathers. And they said to Pharaoh, we have come to dwell in the land because there is no pasture for your servants' flocks, for the scarcity of food is severe in the land of Canaan. And now please let your servants dwell in the land of Goshen. And Pharaoh spoke to Yosef, saying, Your father and your brothers have come to you. The land of Mitzrayim is before you. Settle your father and brothers in the best of the land. Let them dwell in the land of Goshen. And if you know of capable men among them, then make them chief herdsmen over my livestock. And Yosef brought in his father Yaakov and set him before Pharaoh. And Yaakov blessed Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Yaakov, How old are you? And Yaakov said to Pharaoh, The days of the years of my sojourning are 130 years. Few and evil have been the days of the years of my life and they have not reached the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the days of their sojournings. And Yaakov blessed Pharaoh and went out from before Pharaoh. So Yosef settled his father and his brothers and gave them a possession in the land of Mitzrayim, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramesses, and as Pharaoh had commanded. And Yosef provided his father and his brothers and all his father's household with bread for the mouth of the little ones. Now there was no bread in all the land, because the scarcity of food was very severe, and the land of Mitzrayim and all the land of Canaan became exhausted from the scarcity of food. Amen, amen. Okay, thank you, Rick. All right, our last reader is going to be Linda. He have blessed our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. May he bless Linda, who's called Tana Yahweh in the Torah. It is set apart one, bless her and her family, and send blessing and prosperity in all the works of her hands. Amen. Okay, Linda's going to close us up by taking us from chapter 47, verse 14 through 27. And Yosef gathered up all silver that was found in the land of Mithraim and in the land of Canaan, for the grain which they brought for the grain which they bought, and Yosef brought the silver into Pharaoh's house. And when the silver was all spent in the land of Mithraim and in the land of Canaan, all the Mithraites came to Yosef and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in your presence, for the silver is gone? And Yosef said, Give your livestock, and I give you bread for your livestock, if the silver is gone. So they brought their livestock to Yosef, and Yosef gave them bread in exchange for the horses, and for the flocks they owned, and for the herds they owned, and for the donkeys. Thus he fed them with bread in exchange for all their livestock that year. And when the year had ended, they came to him the next year and said to him, We do not, we do not hide from my master that our silver is all spent, and my master also has the livestock we owned. There has not been left any before my master but our bodies and our lands. Why should we die before your eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for bread, and let us and our land be servants of Pharaoh. And give us seed, and let us live and not die, and let the land not lie waste. And Yosef bought the entire land in Mithraim for Pharaoh, because every man of the Mithraites sold his field, because the scarcity of food was severe upon them, and the land came to be Pharaoh's. And as for the people, he moved them into the cities from one end of the borders of Mithraim to the other. Only the ground of the priests he did not buy, 
for the priests had from what Pharaoh gave them by law, and they ate that which Pharaoh gave them by law. Therefore they did not sell their ground. And Yosef said to the people, Look, I have brought, I have bought you in your land today for Pharaoh. Look, here is seed for you, and you shall sow the land. And it shall be that in the harvest you give one-fifth to Pharaoh, and four-fifths is your own as the seed for the field and your food, for those of your households, and as food for your little ones. And they said, You have saved our lives. Let us find favor in the eyes of my master, and we shall become Pharaoh's servants. And Yosef made it a law over the land of Mitzrayim to this day, that Pharaoh should have one-fifth except for the ground of the priests only, which did, not, which did not become Pharaoh's. And Yisrael dwelt in the land of Mitzrayim, in the land of Goshen, and they had possessions there and were fruitful and increased in seed. Amen, amen. Okay, thank you, Linda. Thank you to all you readers. Uh, Rick, you still have your hand up in case you forgot. Okay, appreciate all the readers very much. Excellent job by everyone. Okay, here's the traditional prayer and blessing after the reading. Baruch atah Yahweh, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher natan lano Torah temet, v'chaye olam natab tochenu. Baruch atah Yahweh, noten ha-Torah. Amen. Blessed are you, Yahweh Elohim, King of the universe, who has given us a Torah of truth and has planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, Yahweh, giver of the Torah. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, so let's go quickly into a couple of uh, announcements again. Just a reminder, um, we do this Torah study every week, uh, so we'll continue to do that as well. This Saturday, the 15th, we will have um, Passover forms. Now, yet I still don't have a contract. You know what? I have to call the property again. They keep promising me a contract, and then I don't get one. Um, the uh, 15th, we'll have Mishkanim leading us in praise and worship at services. We'll be streaming that, as well as I think they'll be playing more praise music after services. We'll stream that as well. Um, the leadership meetings, general session, etc., have been moved to the 23rd. Okay, leadership meetings and general session have been moved to the 23rd. Hopefully everybody gets that message. Um, I think Robert's going to send an email out this week to remind everyone. Not, the leadership was going to be the 16th. We're moving it to the 23rd. Okay? All right, so... Um, Ali says, looking at the time for Sukkot, maybe coming for atonement because of the placement of the Holy Days and the Shabbat. There you go. All right, so general session, etc., will be on Sunday, the 23rd. All right. Also, I wanted to reiterate uh, the announcement <clears throat> that I did see Rabbi Tom yesterday, right after his surgery. Uh, I was there waiting uh, in the hospital with uh, his wife and, and some other friends from the ministry, and he's doing uh, very, very well. Um, he had, he had a, it was a fairly major surgery, and um, but he went, it all went through very, very well, and uh, it's so well that he's no longer on oxygen. And let's pray that that continues, that his uh, heart, lungs, and you know, oxygenating his body, the combination is working uh, well enough that he won't have to go back on the oxygen, and uh, we expect him, he won't probably be with us on Shabbat but probably on the 22nd, a week from Shabbat. But he should be back home uh, maybe on Thursday. Okay, so continue to keep him in prayer for a full recovery. Uh, okay, I'll go on the MTY website and I'll change the calendar. That's my fault. I, didn't, I haven't been very active online lately, so I can certainly uh, fix that. Okay, so... Um, Let's let's go ahead and uh, I think that's going to cover for the announcements. Let's go ahead and, and go ahead into the discussion portion of the teaching. Um, David, if you are up to it, why don't you start this off, and I'll go change that calendar just to make sure it's done, if you uh, don't mind taking over the... Sure thing. All right. And if you're new, we'll say this again. We just read the Torah portion, now we discuss it. Of course, always trying to look at 
where we can see ourselves and, of course, where we can see some examples of Messiah and what we can learn and glean. And so go ahead, Mr. Steve Waffle. If you have any questions, also type or comments, type them in in the chat box. You guys know the drill or raise your hand. Steve. Okay. I always try to find something I can apply to today. And I don't know if this is a stretch, but they were being required to bring their youngest brother, even though it was their brother they didn't know. So they had to go back and tell their father what was being required of them, so, which they knew was going to cause some stress to their father. So all of this correlated to me, I see, is our actions of the past can come back to you. So we should think carefully what it is we're planning or wanting to do because we may have to answer to it or explain to even leadership why we have to do something because of what we did in the past. So some people just want to go ahead and do something without thinking through what it is they're going to do. See, so now they're asked to bring their younger brother to their brother, which is... You back, Rabbi? I'm back. I'm back. Thank you. Okay. Um, and I did get to hear all of uh, what Steve was saying. You know, one of the things that I think we should be getting out of this is that... Um, well, actually, there's so many things. You know, the brothers go through a process of repentance. They were not very repentful at first, and then they came to realize that they had really done a bad thing. And Abba provided them with an opportunity for reconciliation and redemption. And so that's an important thing to do, even to the point where you see that Judah offers himself as guarantee, as surety, to bring back Benjamin. You know, And so... Um, you know, we have to think about that in our lives today. You know, a lot of times we think in our lives today, you know, or maybe we don't think about it. I wonder if we actually can think about the idea that, you know, there is an opportunity in our lives, no matter what we've done, that as long as we're still breathing and alive, there's an opportunity for redemption. And the other thing that I hopefully we will get out of this is that that redemption can often come in incredibly surprising ways. In other words, there was no um, there was no way for the brothers to anticipate that this is how it was going to happen. Can we agree? There was no so so imagine that in your own life. You've got family. Okay, I'll let the ones hurry up there real quick. I was going to ask another question. All right. So if the answer is yes to this one, type a seven. I just need to make it a little different. How many of you, and you don't have to put a number, it's okay, how many of you would like an opportunity someday to reconcile something with a family member? Okay, lots of sevens. And I'm not looking at the names, it's just an important, we all, I think almost all of us would like to reconcile something with a family member. Okay, so some of the lessons we can get out of this Torah portion are, for example, A, that, that desire is important. The brothers, I think, by the time they come and meet Joseph, are desiring that reconciliation. They're desiring a chance to make things right. Number two, be prepared and ready, which the brothers really weren't, for it to come in a miraculous form. That's not guaranteeing that it will. I'm not saying that all of you will all get reconciled to back with family members. I'm simply saying that in our lives we should be ready for it to happen potentially in a miraculous, unexpected way, all right? And um, they didn't just, if you notice the brothers was not about just saying they were sorry. They started taking different actions. It changed their lives. Can we agree, and this is normal ones and twos, can we agree that the brothers' lives, by the time they meet Joseph, were not the same as the way they were when they had first traded Joseph into slavery. So the horrible experience that they had gone through and even the things that they had done transformed the brothers ultimately. Okay? 
So Father may allow certain things. Because you may wonder, why would Abba, I, look, I know you say, well, so Joseph could end up in Egypt, and so he could end up saving them all from famine. Well, but he also allowed Joseph to go through some horrible things. He did protect him, but he allowed him to go through some horrible things. But part of it was so that the brothers would have an opportunity for redemption. Remember, these are the same brothers, a lot of them that acted poorly in, with the Dina situation, you know, back at Shechem. And they're not doing a whole lot better at this point. And so um, I think that it's important for us to keep in mind that we also can learn from this that there is a redemptive uh, part of this whole process, part of our transformation. And, and by the way, do you think that the brothers, do you think that the brothers transformed, oh, I don't know, on the road to Egypt? Is that when they transformed, on the road to Egypt to get the uh, grain, or maybe earlier? Do you think it was on the road to Egypt? Only one person says two? There you go, a bunch more twos. All right? They didn't change five minutes before they met Joseph. Remember, he was gone a long time, and their guilt and what Abba allowed to happen to them wore on them. And so just realize that sometimes redemption can take a long time, okay? Because I think that they, from the verses we can see in their, in their writings, they knew that they had been suffering for their decisions. They knew that they had brought cursing upon themselves, but it was also time. It, it, you know, it took a, quite a bit of time before the opportunity for redemption appeared. So we need to learn, I think, a lot of patience out of this. Okay? And so this is really important. All right, now, some of you are saying things like they knew it when the silver appeared in their sacks. No, I think they knew it way before that. I think they had been suffering miserably with guilt for a long time. And um, and that is why they reacted the way they did as far as, you know, bringing Benjamin and causing their father more pain. They had watched, whoever said it earlier, I think it was good, uh, Leanne, well, they had watched their father suffer. Okay? They had watched their father suffer for years. And so that wore on them. A David up in the top says, "Blessed John, fifteen thirteen, laying down your life for another." Yehuda's actions is a type of Yeshua offering himself for his brothers. Yes, okay. Um, this is what we're called to do for each other in a beautiful picture of his, of his personal journey to Yeshua. All right, exactly. Okay. Now, so, so I thank thank you for bringing that up. Uh, you know, initially here, Steve uh, Waffle, because I think that's a big part of this. Is it is a story of redemption. It's also a story of providing miraculously in advance. I mean, think about it. He had, how many years was it from when Yosef was traded to the, uh, sold to the slaves, sold, sold to slavery, and when he took over Egypt? Okay? So it was, it was a good number of years, 13, 15, whatever it was, okay? I'm not looking for an exact number here. So Yahweh started a, a uh, process over 10 years in advance, 13 years in advance, knowing there would be a need for Joseph to be in Egypt to be able to provide food for his family <laughs> so far in advance. This is such an incredible story. Okay, so... This is really, really important stuff, as we can see, okay? Um, let's see, uh, Robert and Aletha, is there a chance that Joseph tested his brothers was also tested to see if they felt the same jealousy towards Benjamin? Yes, it was. I'm sure it was. Because I think he knew that the jealousy towards him was because he was Rachel's, and Rachel was favored um, of, the, of the wives, and therefore there was this idea that... Um, you know, that they may be jealous of him as well. Okay? Carrie says, so getting rid of Joseph made their lives worse, not better. That's true. Okay? All right? I mean, there, you know, there is definitely, you know, people do things and they don't understand as far as 
things being made better or worse. Okay? Uh, let's see. Yaakov also show how hurt he is by the lie. He'll get ill and hard, but is fast in forgiveness. Are we fast in forgiveness? Good point, Yanni. We need to be fast in forgiveness. But also, we want to be careful. What would we, you know, I said this earlier. Um, I said this earlier as part of the prayer time. We Can we agree that the biggest problem with the brothers is that they were letting their emotions drive the bus? Can we all see that? Can we all see that the biggest problem here is that the emotions were driving the bus? Jealousy. I mean, if they'd just been jealous of their brother and not let the emotions start driving the bus, they probably could have calmed down eventually and gotten over it. But they got angrier and more bitter and more aggressive because they needed the emotion to be uh, dealt with. Instead of coming to a proper understanding of how to deal with the situation, they were trying to figure out a way to ease the emotion. And so the best way sometimes in our minds, it's not the, really the best way, but in our minds, the best way sometimes in our minds to deal with emotions is to get rid of the, the thing of the object that's causing the problem of the emotion. This is why we have um, killings and murders of passion. Okay, think about it. There are people out there, they call it a, 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 um, an act of passion. As a person gets so jealous and angry, their emotion, they have to find some way to, to vent, to let that emotion out. We have to find better outlets for our emotions. We have to find better ways for us to deal with our emotions. Okay, because this is, this is a huge, huge, huge issue for us, okay? Okay, Robert Alita said, you have to Joe, once Joseph became ruler, why did he not try to contact his father? First of all, he didn't know his father was alive. And remember, they were nomads. They moved around quite a bit. He wouldn't have known where to go to look for him necessarily. And thirdly, he did not know the state of his brothers and had not really thought about how he wanted to deal with them. Remember, his first inquiry of his brothers, when they talk about their father, is that, oh, their father, they didn't realize that the father was alive. Okay? And so, the scriptures are filled with emotional drivers. Yes, they are. And it doesn't usually go well. Do you remember uh, a certain uh, disciple, you know, had a little problem keeping his sword from almost chopping off an ear. Well, he chopped off the ear, but he's trying to cut the guy's head off. Because Peter had some challenges with that, didn't he? Peter, you know, had to learn to not have his, right? He had to learn not to let his emotions drive the bus. You know, Yeshua said to him, you know, I'm going to be arrested and scourged and all these other things, and, and they're all like, oh, no, Master, be nice to yourself. Or he said to Peter, I need to wash your feet. And he's like, oh, no, you're not, don't wash my feet. He says, well, if you don't let me wash your feet, then you're no part of me. He goes, well, then wash my whole body. He, his emotions were all over the map. Okay? And so you have these kind of problems. Emotions aren't qualified to drive a full bus. So just remember, if your emotions are driving, you are on a shorter bus. Okay. Uh, a short bus with oversight engine. There you go. All right. So David says, perhaps an interesting connection with the word guilt and being ruled guilty in a trial. We are all to appear before the judgment seat where the judge will judge us on our actions. We shouldn't be found guilty. There you go. All right. So that, that's really good. I appreciate that sort of launch in because one of the big things that we get out of the Joseph story is people who are not. Okay. Hold on. No, it's, I'm, gonna, uh, see if I can, I'm not going to type it out. I was going to type it up, but I'll say it. You can write this down. One of the best indicators, one of the best indicators of our maturity, our level of maturity. You know, hopefully everybody's listening and not just typing. Okay, but one of the best indicators of our emotional maturity is how 
we respond to our emotions. I'm not talking about, and I said this I think the other day in one of the teachings, I'm not talking about becoming emotionless. There are lots of things in life that are appropriate to, to react in a, you know, with a strong emotion. Whether that be love or joy or, or um, sadness and tears, there are moments where it is appropriate to have a strong emotion. But if you are emotionally driven as opposed to you having control over the emotion, you can get in trouble. Can we all agree that sadness, when left unchecked, can lead into deep depression or actions of suicide or things like that? See, there's an emotion. There's nothing wrong with that emotion. But if it's not within any kind of level of control, it could be dangerous. All right? Let's take even something as like, well, I'm sure that joy is not a problem. Well, let's see. If you become actually addicted to joy, and that's all you seek is to meet that emotion, then you might neglect a lot of other things. Or you may do things that are actually not good for you, but seem to be joyful. How about how many horrible things have been done in, in the world and in life in the name of love? <laughs> Michael Norris says the Joker. Now that's an old song. Or the Joker, you mean like the Joker character from Batman? Okay. All right, so we have to be very careful. All right, is this thing working? Okay. Um, so there's something, an illustration that somebody used once, and I, I'll, I won't go into all the detail because I have to keep this really quick, but yeah, it was very helpful. And that was just, you know, they, they just they just asked very, very bluntly, okay, so remember the last time that you were deeply, deeply in the grip of a strong emotion and, uh, you know, like say very, very angry, very, very sad and just you know what that was like and just ask yourself that time or really any other time that you got super super emotional did you get a whole lot smarter and the answer is universally no did you make better decisions and the answer is again it's universally no but did it affect those things and the answer is universally yes so what did it do oh oh okay well if it if it affected it, but not for the positive, it was for the negative. And so, you know, what happens is when these things use up our resources, they chew up, you know, you could think of it as chewing up the same resources you would use to be smart or to make good decisions. And so, you know, emotions definitely, we have to recognize they're gifts from Yah, but we are limited beings. We're not like him. And so everything that we have that's in the image of him is limited. He's not limited. You know, he can, he can do everything perfectly and nothing at the expense or compromise of anything else. He's just everything that he should be. We, on the other hand, are limited. And so uh, when you get, you know, very, very much in the grip of any given emotion, any given feeling, it's chewing up the same resources you would use to think straight. It's chewing up the same resources you would use to be intelligent, the same resources you would have to have good judgment, wisdom, self-control, etc. And so seeing as all of those things are actually much more important to us in the long term and to making it in the kingdom and et cetera, uh, we, we want to really, really heed very strongly all of what we're hearing tonight about not letting the emotions drive the bus and, and being careful with that and self-monitoring uh, because these are extensions of Torah, the self-control, and it says as much in Mishle and many other places that you know, he who rules his spirit is better than he who can take a city. Okay, uh, thank you, Raymond, for uh, putting that out there. We do have an urgent message from Travis. Um, he says, uh, please forgive the Torah study interruption, but he would really appreciate a prayer request before the end of the study tonight. His mother is dying probably less than 24 hours. They're headed to St. Louis, Missouri, to be with family and the eventual funeral uh, related. Travis also is making is asking about any M2I family in St. Louis. Uh, he would appreciate being contacted by them. Okay. So let's please uh, you know, pray together. Father, we come before you to lift up Travis 
and his family and the situation with the passing or soon passing of his mother and that father that you would give them the shalom the peace that goes beyond understanding that you would hold them close and give them that comfort and give them that peace to know that there is a plan for all things and that you are fully in control and so father as they go through this very challenging time allow us to provide some comfort and to uh, be there for them and with them and to continue to pray for them so father we come to you now asking all things in the name of Yeshua our Messiah amen amen okay now in case there's anybody new that we should say amen the amen the means you know, it is agreed, and that means, and it is agreed. So the person saying amen, who's leading, is saying, is it agreed? Do we agree? And then the rest of you chime in with, and it is, it is agreed. Okay? Amen. Now, um, when we're dealing with this emotional thing, okay, we, we are... Here's a great example of the challenge, okay? When we're dealing with this emotional stuff, has anybody observed teenagers? Do you remember when you were a teenager? Maybe you have children that are teenagers. And what do you observe when you observe teenagers? You observe, hold on, I'll type it out here, drama. Right, you observe drama, okay? Anybody seen teenage drama? <laughs> okay, so what is the cause of teenage drama? What is the cause of all teenage drama? I will, I will step out on a limb and say it's the cause of all teenage drama. No, don't say hormones. Don't say immaturity. Although those things are connected to it, it's the emotions. Hormones themselves are not a problem. Everybody's got hormones running around in their body. It's how the hormones in their going through puberty affect their emotional state. It's their emotional state that's the problem. Okay? So it's not hormones and immaturity. It's the immaturity and the hormones that have them in a place where they're not in proper maturity to handle their emotions. So it's an inability to, it's not just an inability to control them, it's an inability to know, to know how to deal with them, to balance them. Some of the emotions they're going through are emotions that maybe they never even experienced prior. That these are new emotions, okay? Right, to process, right? There's an inability, inability to process the emotions. Self-gratification is driven by what? Emotions, Okay. Self-gratification is a response to, a, to an emotional state. I want, I like, I don't want, I don't like. It's an emotional place. And so we are told that the goal is to become selfless. Uh, that's a state you cannot achieve without having control over your emotions. You need to drive the bus. The emotions are something that you can allow to flow under a controlled condition so that you can respond appropriately to life. There are situations in life that appropriately require, I shouldn't require, it was, it's appropriate response to that situation would be anger, joy, sadness, shame, um, uh, whatever response you're talking about, okay? And so these are all appropriate at times. The Bible tells us there's a time to, to, for peace, there's a time for war, there's a time for everything. But we, we will have ourselves dealing with things not in its time if we don't have control of our emotions. Because then every moment becomes a time for something. This is why we came up with the idea of coming to a store near you. The feelings bag. <laughs> Okay? Some of you need like a feelings trailer. Okay, get those feelings and throw them in the bag and control it. All right? Very, very important that we actually understand this. 
Okay. That's right. The emotions are able allowed to be passengers on the bus. Okay. And occasionally you can even let them sit in the front seat when it's appropriate, but you don't hand them the wheel and the gas pedal or the brakes. This is how we have accidents. We don't let emotions drive the bus. Okay, so, you know, this is, this is the deal. By the way, some of you are challenged from a whole different direction than you even realize. It's your emotions that keep you from forgiving yourself. It's your emotions that keep you from aiming higher. It's your emotions that keep you uh, handcuffed and hamstrung in terms, of, in terms of moving forward in your life. And don't, don't fall into the trap of thinking there are positive emotions and negative emotions. All emotions have a place. All right? Okay, Harold and Betty say sometimes I think my feelings bags has a hole in it. No, it probably doesn't have a hole in it. It's probably stuff that's flowing over the top and out of the bag. You just need a bigger bag, or you need to get those emotions under control. All right? Right, Greg says you can be tied up in knots, but that's an emotional response. Okay? Hold on, I'm going to type something out here. Give me a second to type this, okay? Um, give me a second to type this out. Okay, anybody suffer from any of these things? You don't have to type any ones. I'm just saying fear, anxiety, depression, insecurity. You know what's the cause of all that? An emotion that's not under control. When you're afraid, there's an emotion driving the bus. When you're anxious, there's an emotion driving the bus. When you're depressed, there's an emotion driving the bus. When you're insecure, there's an emotion driving the bus. How do we get rid of such emotions that keep us from moving ahead? You don't get rid of them. You decide to find a way for them to be useful instead of controlling you. You find a way to use them appropriately and allow them only to come out and play when it's safe to allow them to come out and play. All right? Take their driver's licenses away. You know, it's understandable that at some point, something may happen in your life that would make you feel unsafe. But if you're going to start feeling unsafe all the time because, you know, for no reason anymore, but just because you're so used to habitually feeling unsafe, this is something that can become hard to move forward. This is something that can become debilitating. You know, there are probably situations in life where, you know, it, it would be reasonable for you to feel some fear or anxiety. That's not the problem, okay? The problem is that you allow it to dwell and become the driving part of your decision making. When we make decisions in a strong emotional state, as Raymond pointed out, and I pointed out many times, we are not going to probably make decisions that are very good. Okay? How do we deal with all this? I will be doing teachings and I will be uh, giving instruction sort of from the point of view of um, life coaching on on those kind of things. So we're not going to get that all done today. Okay, but step one, all right? Okay, uh, step one, here it is. Very important, I'm going to put it right here in big letters. Step one, okay, self-awareness. Okay, step one, you must be aware of the state you are in. You have to be aware that you're not just running on autopilot, but you're aware of um, time to open the popcorn. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's right. Get the popcorn out and be aware of what you're doing. Okay, let me ask you a question. Nobody type right now. Just hold on. I'm going to ask you a question for ones and twos. Hold on. Ready? Just wait for everybody to stop typing. Okay, here's the question, right? How many of you, 
however many times a week, it doesn't matter. If we were filming you all day long, would be sh ashamed and appalled at the way you've allowed your emotions to just drive that bus. Okay, so with all those ones, you know what that means? You need to be the one with the camera. Somehow you have to find a way to live your life while also observing you living your life. You need to be aware and pay attention to yourself living life at the same time also observing how you're living life. Okay? That is step one. Self-awareness. The problem is that we go into autopilot. Okay, so how do I... Um, Okay, let me word it another way. Okay? I remember I remember um, dealing with a person, I won't mention who it is, but somebody years and years ago, and I told them that what they were doing was annoying. Okay? That's what I said to them. I mean I was I was younger and I, you know I, I said I said, man, that which that's annoying. Now, the person could Interpret that as this thing that I'm doing right now is causing a sense of annoyance to the person that I'm working with, or, which was actually the case, they embraced it and said, I think of them as being annoying as a state of being. So I said, so they looked at me like, oh, so you think I'm annoying? No, I don't think you are annoying, or you are irritating, or you are whatever it is, I think the action that I'm experiencing is causing me to have an, a reaction of this level. I'm not saying that you should tell people these things. I'm just going to give you an example. Some of us become angry. Not that you're just having a moment of anger, but you are now an angry person or a fearful person or an insecure person. So you aren't just having a moment of insecurity. You become that person, you are in that, it becomes a defining trait. Okay? Oh, there you go. I did it. In, okay, there's an in focus that covers some of this. All right? So we want to be observing am I becoming so, when the emotion is driving the bus, that state starts to define you. Hopefully, you understood that and you. Follow that. When you allow the emotion to drive the bus, that state now becomes a defining factor of at that moment who you are, not just something you're doing. Okay? There's there's a thing called being depressed. You could be depressed. I mean some things are depressing. So you can be depressed for a few moments. But if you stay in that place called depression, then it becomes thing. Uh, it becomes a diagnosis. See, if something makes you angry, then a few minutes later you won't be angry anymore. If you have a problem with anger driving the bus, you need to go to a thing. You go for a thing called anger management, because now it's become a defining part of you. Okay, did that make sense for everybody? Did everybody kind of grasp a hold of all that? All of this because. Of what Steve said about the brothers. Okay, this is a long process. If you spent your whole life being something, being angry, depressed, insecure, afraid, um, uh, stressed, uh, anxious, it's not going to be fixed in five minutes. Okay, if you spent a long time developing that trait where it was part of defining who you are, and that trait doesn't just go away from almost no effort. Okay? This is life coaching. Okay, Crystal says, thank you, Rabbi, for explaining life to us. So you have to be patient. You have to be persistent. You have to be consistent. And don't forget, you know what it is? Okay. If 
Somebody had said earlier that I try to stay away from people that trigger me emotionally. Okay, Robert Elliott has said that. Okay, is that wrong? Not necessarily. You should avoid people that trigger you emotionally until you're emotionally mature enough to handle it. All right. So I can understand that. Okay, so step one, self-awareness. Is there a list of the other steps? Not yet. Okay, but let me kind of go through it this way. So, so it's not that you want to avoid people that trigger you necessarily. But you want to start being aware that certain things do trigger you. You want to be aware of your uh, weakness in a particular area. Okay, let's, it's kind of like, okay, if I was, this is why I wanted to go there. If I was an alcoholic, how many drinks will it take for me to have a problem? One. That's not just an agreement, but that's one, right? Just one drink. Well, guess what? How, many, how much depression can a depressed person be okay with? None. How much, you know, uh, you know, um, whatever makes someone angry, how much can they, how much of that can they deal with? None. Okay, so you have to find a way to overcome these things so that they are no longer addictions. You almost become addicted to it. Oh, but Rabbi, I don't, I don't want to be afraid or anxious or insecure. But your systems become addicted to it. You're almost afraid to try to live without it because it's kind of like your comfort zone. I'm used to being afraid and anxious and stressed and fearful. I'm used to all of these things. All right? David said, step two, repeat step one. Well, no, there's more steps, but you got to start off with an awareness. So, so let me get back to the alcoholic analogy. So how safe is it for an alcoholic to ever forget that they're an alcoholic? Never. Okay? Awesome. So it's never safe for an alcoholic to forget they're an alcoholic. Guess what? It is never safe for you to forget that you have a challenge with insecurity or fear or anxiety or anger or depression or whatever it is. It is never safe for you to forget that you have this. Okay, Lisa Kennedy, wouldn't avoiding situations that trigger you prevent you from learning how to actually appropriately deal with your emotions? Not necessarily, because remember, my answer was not that you need to avoid them forever, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to avoid them until you have learned the tools, processes, and techniques to help you deal with it better. Because otherwise, all you're going to do is get triggered. Does that make sense, Lisa? In other words, if, if, you're, if you're in a place where you get triggered and you have very little control, then you should avoid those things if possible until you have developed the internal character changes, the transformations to allow you to face those things without being triggered. Otherwise, it's just going to trigger you. you know, there's no getting around it. It's just going to trigger you. Okay? Okay, so hopefully that's making making some sense. All right, I don't know how we can go from that into the rest of the Torah portion, but um, I think I think it gives everybody a lot of food for thought. Okay. Okay, let me let me kind of give you something that that would really help. Okay, I think that if you want to, it may be good for you to spend time, and you can write this down if you want. It'll help you. Um. But I want you to do this in two steps, so don't get depressed about the first step, okay? Because the first step could be a little discouraging. I want spiritual shield. Let's not get into some of that Christian East idea of, you know, um, thinking that somehow there's a demon causing it and all this other stuff. No, you could, you could fix this. You, you, you know, you, you uh, receive these curses generationally from society and other generations. And some of these things are learned, some of these things you were born with. But we can deal with them. Now... So step one was the self-awareness. So let's deal with that self-awareness. You can, you can actually ask friends, ask family, or some, find somebody that you trust that will be honest with you and you can receive it. 
to help you understand you. You think you know you, but they may know you a little bit better than you think you know you. All right? And so spouses can do this. Children can do this. Whoever it is that you feel can help you understand what, what you really are like. Because there's stuff that you really have no idea that people think about you and how they see you that would maybe surprise you because it may be actually good stuff, by the way, not just bad stuff. People may see you in a much better light than you do. You may be much harder on yourself than they are. Or you may be less, you know, not, not, not hard enough on yourself and you've been deceiving yourself, okay? Okay, if you do get triggered, is it acceptable to have outlets to channel your emotions? Into? Yes, but you should be, um, you know, apparently Greg is a what about Bob fan, Dr. Marvin. Okay, so if you do get triggered, the best thing to do is have a go-to person. Don't just think about a way to channel your emotions. Go to your, look, what do they do in alcohol? It's anonymous. You have a sponsor. You have a person you call. So you have to have somebody you can call. It doesn't have to be me. Just someone you can call and say, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling that anxiety or that anger or that whatever. It could be a lust. It could be a, a, um, a desire. It could be any kind of thing that's out of control, and you can help them talk you down or talk you up if you're already way down. All right? And so let's, let's, let's start off with that. So you want to get a really clear picture. Let's go back to our mall map. <clears throat> we use a mall map example often, which is, you know, in the mall where you have the you are here. Problem is a lot of you have no idea where you really are. So you think you're, like, standing in front of J.C. Penney, but really you're standing in front of, you know, Macy's or something. You're in a different place than you think you are. <clears throat> so the mall map idea does help. And by having, having your friends and others help you to accurately identify the starting point of who you are and what people see and what you don't see and that kind of thing. And then what you can do secondarily to that is you can write out a description of you if all those things were fixed. And focus on moving from one to the other. In other words, transforming from one into the other. So developing the character of Yeshua is a great starting point. It'll help you know with that as, as well. Because after all, transforming into him is our main goal. What if you have asked a person not to speak to you in a derogatory manner and the person continues to do it, refusing to acknowledge wrongdoing? I can accept what is being said as truth but refuse to be treated. Yes. Okay, first of all, if you've asked a person not to speak to you in a derogatory, you know, in a derogatory manner and they continue to do it, why are you still talking to them? I mean, you know, if every time you walked up to me I slapped you, at what point are you going to stop walking up to me? Now, you can tell them, hey, if you're not going to stop this, then I'm not going to talk to you anymore. Okay? I'm not just saying just break things off and don't communicate, but you say, look, I'm, you know, I'm going to, right, setting boundaries. All right? And so if, if someone is treating you in a way that you would rather not be treated, you should make that clear, but you can't make them stop. You can ask them to stop, and if they don't, you tell them that there's a consequence. The consequence is what? Well, then you're not going to get to spend time with me anymore. So I'm not going to keep putting myself back in a position of getting treated with derogatory, you know, language. Okay? All right. Okay, so yes, it's still good to try to ask them to stop. I'm not saying to break things off just because somebody treated you in a way that you didn't appreciate once. I'm saying if the person you've asked to stop continues to show you that they're not going to stop, then you don't need to be putting yourself in that position. Let them know if you don't stop, then this is going to not be continuing. But you got to be really careful not to, when they treat you badly, don't let, this goes back to the matrix thing, don't let them speak into your life. Don't receive it. Just because they're saying nasty stuff doesn't mean you need to receive it. What's wrong with you, you loser? Well, I don't need to receive that. You'll never amount to anything. Just because they say it, you don't have to receive it. I know that's hard. Don't Listen, I, 
I don't want you to ever think that I think, oh, Rabbi, you just think this is so easy. No, I don't think this is so easy. I have studied this more than I've studied the Bible. I know it's not easy. Okay? I've got two expertises in, that, I, that are my main expertises, life coaching, understanding what makes us tick and not work correctly, and, and the Bible. All right? And so, you know, Holly says, Yeshua didn't receive the insults and persecution when he's being taken to be crucified, correct? Robert Aletha, when someone triggers me emotionally, I tend to replay the incident over and over and over in my mind with different outcomes. That is why I just avoid those who trigger me because of the constant rewind drives me crazy. Or when somebody triggers you emotionally, you can call somebody, have a go-to friend, have a, a um, you know, an accountability partner who you can go to and say, someone just triggered me, help me process this emotion so I can let it go. All right? Uh, Crystal says, if you don't like them, why do you like their opinion? Well, it's not so much that you don't like them. You know, we, are, we have to always consider who are we allowing to speak into our lives. Are we allowing people to speak in our lives that have demonstrated how much they care for us and love us, or just we sort of got stuck with them and just allowed them for, you know, I mean, some of you think, well, I don't have any other friends. Well, it's time maybe to get some new friends. You have a whole group of people here at MTOI that can become friends who might just treat you a whole lot better than these other people have treated you in the past. Okay? And that's where we need to really be thinking about this. In my case, it was a spouse. I had to get a divorce. Sometimes that happens. All right? Okay? Don't allow yourself to, though, to fall into judgment of those that are giving you grief. What does it say? What does the Bible say to do to those that are wrongfully abusing you? Pray for them. Turn the other cheek. Love them. Love and pray. Forgive them. Okay, so make sure you are responding correctly, even though they are not responding correctly. Okay? Make sure you are responding appropriately, even if they are not responding appropriately. You are responsible as children of the living Elohim to respond correctly, even when others do not. <laughs> they don't have their emotions bags. They don't have their feelings bags. All right? And all that, do not become a doormat. Well, if you choose to draw the line and say it strongly, but, you know, without, you know, fighting or attacking, but simply say, hey, you know, I've been noticing lately that you feel very comfortable to speak to me in a less than, you know, flattering way, that you say that you're fairly mean at times and stuff. Hey, listen, I'm not wanting to start a fight. I'm just letting you know if that continues, then this relationship is not going to continue. So you don't want to go over and accuse them and say, well, what's wrong with you, you whatever, you've been so mean to me. You know, I just say, look, you may not be aware of this because you seem to have gotten very comfortable with it, but you seem to be very comfortable to say things to me that are really not very nice. And I really don't enjoy that. I don't appreciate it. And so I would appreciate you not doing that anymore. And if that's a problem, then we don't have to continue having this relationship. Did you follow how I said that? It was strong, confident, clear, but not attacking. All right? I even gave them the, the, the benefit of the doubt to say, you may not be aware of this. You know, there are people in your life that love you very much that have just gotten into a bad habit of using language that's not very flattering, and they may not even know that they're doing it. Give them that little out. Give them that opportunity to say, I wasn't aware of it. I'm sorry. I'll do better. Okay? So hopefully that could work. Okay, full circle. The, and the abusive person drew near. 
<laughs> and you handled it maturely. Just trying to kind of add the Parsha back to that. Thank you, by you guys. Good. Okay. Um, Rick says, expect, acknowledge, and, re and give recognition for good behavior actions and show disappointment when we have here. No. Hold on. Stop. Time out. I didn't tell you to show disappointment. I told you to express that it was not the way you desired to be treated. Because disappointment is a judgment. Did you understand what I said? The only one that should be disappointed is Abba. And we want to do everything we can not to disappoint him. When you tell someone that you're disappointed, you have now become the judge. Because you're now holding them to your standard. So stop being disappointed. So tell people that it's not that you're disappointed. Just say, I don't desire to be treated this way. If we're going to have a relationship, in this relationship, I would rather not be treated with that, those kind of words or those kind of actions, whatever it is that, and say, so if that's the way it's going to continue, then I'm not going to continue with the relationship. Did you follow that? So, so Rick, I would say, no, we do not show disappointment. Disappointment comes out of a very specific type of relationship. A parent, it's appropriate for a parent to do this with a child. See, Crystal's asking that. Yes, it's appropriate for a parent to do this with a child. Because in that child's life, you are like Abba. You are like the father. It's also, but be careful with this, it also has a place sometimes with a marriage and a spousal thing, but you got to be really careful that. I would be careful in counsel about that. You don't want to be on a regular basis telling your spouse that you're disappointed. Because remember, when you got married, each of you had an idea what the other one, you know, position. Like if you were a woman, you had an idea of what a husband should be doing, and, and then when he, when he married you, he had an idea of what a husband should be doing. And whatever didn't match doesn't mean you should be disappointed. Maybe your expectations are wrong. By the way, that also works with children. You need counsel because you may be very disappointed in your child for no reason. I'll give you an example. My mother was a fifth grade school teacher. Okay, I was a fairly smart kid, and I came home with a 99 on the test. She was disappointed I didn't get 100. Well, that's unreasonable. Okay? Your child goes and start smoking cigarettes or does some other thing, yes, you should be disappointed. But some of us are disappointed in people because they didn't meet our standards, which sometimes our standards are out of whack. Let me ask the question, can we all agree that people can have out of whack standards that they're holding people up to? So be careful because if that happens, then you're going to be disappointed with people. If I don't meet your expectations, you will be disappointed. But yet, maybe your expectations are what's wrong, not me. I had a person, probably more than one, come to move to the area. This was a few years back, so you guys don't know who I'm talking about. Moved to the area, didn't stay very long, but expected that we were going to become like best buddies. And when it didn't happen, guess what? He was disappointed and angry, and judged me. But I never gave him any reason to set that expectation. We didn't agree to that relationship. You see? So you got to be careful with this whole codependent school district has very bad bus drivers. There you go. Um, you got to be careful with that disappointment thing. So even when a parent's doing it with a child, be really careful with that. Because you want to know, what do you think might happen to that child hearing over and over again how he's a disappointment or she's a disappointment in life? Do you think that child's going to grow up very balanced and, and with the right amount of self-esteem and self-confidence to be successful in the world? That's right, fail. You're going to see a failure there. All right. 
All right, look, it's <laughs> we had we covered one little piece of this, but I think it was important. Um, so this is what you get when it's me instead of David. David's going to take you through verse by verse and everything else, and I'm going to get on my soapbox and give you a mini sermon. I apologize for that. Okay. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll kind of close it up from here. All right. Okay. Um, look, I'm telling you right now, this is what I'm seeing in the body more than anything else. We need to grow up. A grow up means finding a way to get a hold of our emotional states and understanding that there are things that are, you know, some of you may think, well, being disappointed. I know Rick did. I'm not trying to pick on Rick. It's a logical response, thinking that it's good to be disappointed. Now, disappointment is actually sitting in a judge's chair. So we've got to be really careful with that. Okay? Okay, Rivets and Joanne has put a prayer request out. Yes, and I spoke to uh, her and I spoke to Rabbi Tom about, let's see, I spoke to him, it's now 10 o'clock. I spoke to him about 7 o'clock, about three hours ago. Um, he's doing great. He just needs continued healing and restoration of strength. He's still a little bit wobbly after his surgery, but doing really well, okay? Um, so just, just uh, wanted to throw that all out there. Okay. Very helpful, especially about the disappointment. Thank you. You're welcome, Bob and Yvonne. All right, so let me go ahead and uh, let's see. I'll wave goodbye first, and then we'll go ahead and get a closing prayer, et cetera. Let's go ahead and kind of do this. <coughs> Praise God, I haven't coughed too much. Okay, I love all of you, and I am not disappointed in any of you. Okay? I think you're all doing a great job of doing the best you can under your circumstances to transform. And if you're not, you know it, and you need to get on you, not me. If you're not putting out that effort, you know that. You don't even need to tell you. So I want to encourage you. You are all called because you have that ability. The spark is in you to do what has to be done to transform into his image. Amen? Amen. All right, so let's go ahead and um, a long distance high five to. Our Father, we, we thank you for this time together, for this amazing time of learning about ourselves and our interactions with others and how we conduct ourselves and how we handle our own emotions and our expectations and what we expect of others. This, this is an amazing teaching. Thank you, Rabbi. Father, we, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for your Torah. Uh, and all the many things we, we can glean and learn from it and apply into our lives. Uh, again, we lift up Rabbi Tom. We lift up uh, Travis and Jessa in their travels and uh, everyone else in, in this family. Uh, we pray for your continued blessing and protection and for the leadership of MTOI going forward. Uh, we just thank you and praise you, Abba, in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Okay. Um, who was it that was supposed to call me? Was it uh, Janet Olivier? Yes, you can call after the study. Um, I don't remember. And I know, Ali, I do owe you a session as well. We'll try to get that worked out tonight if we can. All right. Now, Olivier and Janet, do you have my cell phone? Or do I have to? Okay, so call that number. All right. And then, Ollie, um, you can try me in about, I don't know, try me in about 30 minutes or so and see how that works if you want to try me, okay? All right. Well, blessings, everyone. I really appreciate everybody being here for the study. Glad to be back in the saddle, so to speak. And, um,
I'm going to put a little countdown here. When that countdown gets to zero, we close everything up. All right. Okay. Robin, you don't get to put the countdown. Only I do. Thank you. <laughs> this gives you a few seconds to, you know, like a minute here to kind of, um, what do you call it? Uh, say goodbye to each other. Wish each other a good night. Laila Tov. A good week. Shavuot Tov. Okay, also, for all the men and the ladies, we are planning classes for starting hopefully in January sometime. We'll try to figure out a way to broadcast them and allow you to participate remotely. And so we are planning that here in the very near future. Okay. Classes, life coaching type stuff, like we just did tonight, but actually in a much more organized way. All right. So things like dealing with emotions, dealing with your role as a man, role as a woman, um, dealing with uh, finances, dealing with all kinds of stuff. Careers. Singles getting ready to get married, married people figuring out how to stay married and be successful in marriage. We'll cover everything. All right. Ian, I'm still hoping to get out to Hawaii one of these days. I haven't been there since the honeymoon, but you know, I'll see about arranging something to get out there to Hawaii one of these days. Ali says, Lahit Raut, which means uh, till, we, till we see each other again. But am I flying standby? No. Why, can you get me on a standby deal? Oh, well, get in touch with us. That'll be good. Which island do you want again? Are you on the big island? Because I was on Maui and Kauai for about 17 days. You're on Oahu. I was on Oahu for one day, just long enough to drive around it, which didn't take very long. I'd like to come out there when the waves are big. I'd love to go to, to see the North Shore and see the big waves. The waves were not very big when I went. It was the end of September, and uh, it wasn't the waves weren't very big. But I'd like to see the big waves in, you know, at uh, Pipeline. Is there a guide someone how to use the chat as this is our first time and we are not sure how to participate? Um, at this point, we're finishing, but no, but we, sh we normally put up the, the number codes. Ones are yeses, twos are noes, and things like that. Um, the Gadol Kahuna, the big Kahuna, there you go. So hey, when you and by the way, you'll, when you come back, Al and Jeannie, you'll just over time you'll see how things go. You'll just pick it up. It's not real complicated. It's it's pretty simple stuff. All right, well that's going to kind of do it. Blessings to everyone. I hope everyone has a great week. Um, Janet and Olivia, you can call as soon as uh, the give me like a minute. You know, some of you guys wait. To, I don't even wait till they stop to close this thing. Let me close this up. Give me about five minutes and give me a call. Ollie, you can wait about about 30 minutes, and I'll see what I, what I can do for you. All right, shalom, shalom. Going to end the meeting and the recording.